Hi everybody, welcome back to the Opinionated Reefer. My name's Andy and in this video we're going to cover the 3 month update of the SPS dominated nano tank. So let's dive right in. The tank has now been running for around 3 months and to be honest there's not a great deal of change uh, from the last update but I have added a new fish, a cleaner shrimp, a peppermint shrimp, three or four new trochus snails and a few new corals. We'll cover the, the fish first so as you can see it's a long-nosed butterfly fish or sometimes called a yellow long-nosed butterfly fish. And just to be clear guys, I know this tank isn't big enough for this fish long term. It's, I've actually moved it over from my uh, Reefer 350 because I wouldn't say it was getting bullied, but it was struggling to get any food at feeding time. As you know, fish like similar to this, like a copper band, they tend to be quite picky eaters and not very fast off the mark when it comes to uh, feeding so I decided just to move it into this tank to give it a break for the, for the other fish and feed it up a bit. Also as we'll get into later this tank has been suffering from uh, low nitrates and low phosphates so I figured adding this fish would uh, help with the bio load and ultimately help some of the corals that have been struggling. Now as you can see here, it's actually eating uh, quite well there, it's getting stuck in but in the main tank full of big tangs and aggressive damsels, it was struggling a little bit. It only eats frozen food, so what I've been feeding it is frozen krill, frozen mysis shrimp and frozen brine shrimp and it also takes budworms now and again so I just fire in a mix of that and it seems quite happy. Now this is, isn't a standard yellow long-nosed butterfly fish, it's actually a very rare uh, type of long-nosed butterfly fish called a, a wana eye long-nosed butterfly, I think that's how you pronounce it. I believe the species was only uh, discovered in 2012 and comes from the Papua New Guinea area. Um, so I got this from Nessie's Lair about 8 or 9 months ago for quite a bargain price and it's done okay in the main tank but it's never really grew so I'm wondering if it's due to feeding. So it's still fairly small so I think it'll do fine in here for the time being. Hopefully I'll be able to fatten it up. So let's take a look at some of the new corals I've added. So the idea here is to create a little LPS garden around the base of the, the main rock column and the first one added was some ultra dark candy canes and some um, small uh, blaster moussas there. I'm a real fan of these sort of dark candy canes with the bright yellow uh, mouths on them. Candy canes usually do really well for me, so hopefully these will uh, propagate very well in the long term. What I'm attempting here is to create a sort of mixed stylophora colony. So I've got a, a pink stylo and a green stylo sort of on the same frag disc. They don't uh, seem to sting each other, so hopefully they should uh, grow into a nice colony with uh, contrasting colours. So on to some of these SPS frags that were uh, basically put in here as an emergency measure. Now, as you might expect, some of these haven't been doing that well. This is probably down to a lack of uh, nutrients, specifically really low phosphate and nitrates. But it's also likely uh, tank maturity. Now you wouldn't really expect Acropora to do that well in such a new system. So if we take a look at the, some of these frags you can see a lot of them seem quite uh, faded in colour and 
and actually starting to recede from the base up. Now this is a, a classic sign of uh, environmental stress or low nutrients, usually low phosphate can be the main cause of um, tissue recession from the base. Now some of these frags are actually, I can see they're too far gone, I'd, I'd be as well just chucking them. So I'm not that bothered, whatever survives, survives, whatever doesn't, doesn't. One good sign is, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm starting to get coralline algae growing on to the frag rack there. So that's a good sign that the tank is actually maturing and should be ready for SPS corals. So I think uh, the plan going forward will be to get another couple of uh, little fish, perhaps a small little uh, possum wrasse or pink streak wrasse and maybe an algae blenny or a coral goby or maybe even both. We'll see how it goes. But I think all I can do for now is just try and help keep the tank stable and let it mature. I'm actually dosing a little bit of both ATI nitrate and ATI nutrition uh, phosphate. So it's just trying to get that balance where I'm providing enough to feed the corals and stop them from starving and also try and avoid like another algae bloom in the tank. I've also started uh, dosing some uh, phyto and zooplankton food, coral food into the tank and feeding fairly heavy so not much else I can do but hope and pray that the tank matures enough for some of these SPS to actually start to base out a bit and grow then I should be good to go from there. So a quick look in, in the sump here and not a great deal has changed. Um, I've moved some of the live rock into the sump. The skimmer still is only really producing kind of watery skim mate. But the biggest uh, thing I've actually done is I've connected up my apex. I had a second uh, pH probe, so I've hooked my, my apex up to nano tank, and I'll have a quick look at how the, pH, the daily pH swing goes. This tank is actually fairly stable in terms of uh, both temperature and pH. So this is my apex uh, pH dashboard. And if we have a look at the, the chart here, we can see it's got a fairly consistent swing going from 8.2 up to 8.4. I actually had a peak of 8.52 one day. Not sure why that is. But um, I think it's fairly consistent, but the last couple of days we've had a big dip in pH, so I'm not sure what's causing that. Maybe that's just... At atmospheric uh, CO2 levels or something. No sure. As you can see, fairly consistent, which is kind of what you want. So if we just have a quick look at the, the temperature here. Totally rock solid most of the time. We've had a wee dip up to 25.5 degrees Celsius just today because I ended up leaving the heating on all day long. So, yeah. Things are looking fairly stable. I'm actually running both uh, tanks off the one apex. Well, well, no running, but I'm monitoring the nano and monitoring and controlling the 350 off the one apex system, which is a fairly useful tool. So that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found this informative and I'll catch you on the next update for the SPS dominated nano tank. I'm the Opinionated Reefer and I'll catch you later.